Integrating AI functionality into your web applications is super easy, and you can build and deploy an AI application with very minimal effort using Fly GPUs. We previously covered the setup and the configuration process for self-hosting an LLM in this video over here, and now we just want to demonstrate some real-world applications of using it. So for this project, we're using a Llama to host Llama 3.1 on a Fly GPU. Annie was kind enough to walk us completely through the process in the video that I mentioned, which of course you can find down below in the description, by the way. While we're going to run through this again very briefly, you can definitely find more detailed information there in that video. What you will need from the video, however, is this repo containing the Fly Toml file that you'll need to configure your Fly GPU. First, we clone the repo and in the Fly Toml file, update the name of our app. From there, we can run Fly Launch dash dash Flycast, which will both launch and deploy it. If you're asked, you can say yes to accept the existing config because, well, you're using an existing Fly Toml file instead of making a new one during the launch process, and no to tweaking the settings because we kind of already tweaked them a little bit. Once it's deployed, the terminal will share the location of your Flycast app, which should be your app name.flycast. And now we just need to download our model. So we'll run this fly machine run command. This will allow us to remotely SSH into a fly machine. And once connected, we can run the command to pull the version of the model that we need. In this case, since we're using Llama 3.1, our command would be Olama pull Llama 3.1. To test our app, we need to connect to our Olama instance from our local environment. And since Olama is running as a private Flycast app, you can only really access it within your organization's private network. So we'll use Flyproxy, which is built in to establish a connection between an internal port of our choosing and the external port of our private app. To set this up, we run the command flyproxy 8000 colon 80. I'm using 8000 as my local port here, but you can use whatever port number that you want. And then your app name dot flycast. With our LLM set up and ready, we can now dive into building. Our application is built on the Remix framework and the functionality is pretty simple. You create a dynamic list, you submit that list within our prompt to the LLM to perform some analysis and then return the result. In this case, we're building the sandwich saver. It's the perfect app for folks who just can't finish a whole foot long in one go. You list the ingredients in your leftover sandwich, and when it's submitted to our LLM, it provides us with a suggested non-sandwich related recipe that we can make with those leftovers. Our structure has three components. First, there's addingredients.tsx. Our submission form, it has one input, one submit button, and uses the post method. Pretty straightforward. Next, we have ingredientList.tsx. It works alongside our form, and the ingredientList function here adds an event listener to our form and handles the submission, allows us to add ingredients to our list, allows us to remove items from our list, which we've added beside each list item, and returns the list as the component. Finally, there's saverai.tsx, which handles sending the request to our large language model and displays the results in a container. In our case, we have a run model function here, which makes a fetch request to our local host URL using the local port that we set in Fly Proxy to the appropriate endpoint. It defines the body of our request. So essentially we're telling it, evaluate the prompt against this model, including the items from the list that the user has created and do not stream your response. Basically only send the response once it's fully complete and then sets the correct output. So either the response to the prompt or an appropriate error, depending on what's happening. The output is then rendered within the content of our component once it's done. All of this is rendered on a single page, our index, just to keep it really simple. <laughs> we run a test and can see that it's working as expected, so we can move on to running fly launch. With a basic application like this, it's pretty much the only command that we need to get it out in the wild. So once we get the all clear from the command line, we can go and see our application and with some simple styling, it even looks kind of snazzy. And there you have it. Our application is up and running and ready for use. And okay, let's face it. I mean, this app 
it's kind of boring, right? But, but it's also extremely flexible in that it allows you to leverage AI in a flexible way that can be easily modified. You just need some manner of dynamic input and a place for the output. So not into sandwiches, how about a to-do list instead? It works in roughly the same way and you can fine tune the functionality by adjusting your prompt as needed. Or I, you know, I don't know, an app to categorize chickens, suggest chicken names. Or if you already have an application you've developed and you've been kind of wanting to throw AI into the mix and see if it can help enhance your features, then this is a great way that you can test that. So I hope following along with us has helped inspire you to try working with AI, to try experimenting with the features, and I hope I get to see some of the cool things that all of you build out there and put out into the world. And we'll see you in the next one. So in this case, it would be local, ho local horse? Really? Okay. There you have it. But how, how many different ways can I say there you have it before I don't sound like an alien? Is this even the way I talk?